And I have no other answer than uh, in some cases it is maybe impossible to escape imprisonment. I like to abolish uh, much of the state functions in control of illegal behavior, but not all. Sometimes it is necessary to use power, and I accept that uh, that might be inevitable. And if I should use a label on myself, I'm a minimalist, but not an abolitionist in this area. But so little as possible. And what then is the alternative? That is to me to get people to talk to each other, to perceive what happened, try to bring parties together, try to see conflict as a possibility for clarification what is wrong, and then to get people into a position where again they have a chance to meet each other and to see each other as human beings. And we have in uh, this country for several years now had a special law in our books, a law on alternative conflict solutions. I like that word better than the question of restorative justice, because sometimes it's nothing to restore, but it is a chance to let people meet, at least to tell why they acted in a deplorable way very often, and also for the victim to tell what she or he felt about what had happened. And in that way, try to bring in other ways of handling these conflicts. I think South Africa uh, is to me a great ideal in the way they did it. Very, very often it's a question, and it's the same question as among academics generally, and everybody, namely, if we really understand what happens, that is the most important point in creating further development and further peace between human beings. So I'm very happy with the fantastic development it has been within this arena of alternative conflict solutions. But there are dangers. And these dangers relate back to the question of treatment. Because if alternative conflict solutions is enforced on some of the parties, it might end up as a very unregulated tool for oppression. I remember an uh, Indian friend, uh, a woman, who said once, I'm so happy there were no alternative conflict solution in my village. Because that alternative conflict solution would have been something of the males who had taken the hand, uh, upper hand in it, and it would be their alliances with other males who would have been counting. And that is not a good situation. I agree. And therefore, it's so important to preserve penal law mechanisms and the ordinary judges so that if you don't find it satisfying, or one of the parties do not find it satisfying to be in the situation of uh, uh, such a mediation situation or alternative conflict uh, situation, then you can say, no, I do not accept this, I want to go to the ordinary court. You can then, another question that is raised very much is, can all cases be met with mediation or alternative conflict resolutions? I think all cases could be attempted. Uh, society might demand uh, other sanctions also. But I think particularly those who feel hurt by what has happened are better handled, handled if they get a chance to talk in anger and with everything than when it is a structured meeting in the penal court. So, it is good, but also some problems in uh, this solution with alternative conflict solutions. But I'm very happy 
that I see this is gaining terrain in the Norwegian society. I think this is an important mechanism to see to it that the police and crime control system is not growing and growing and growing. What is a tendency in modern societies, where modern societies develop into more and more types of interaction between people who do not really know each other. In a way, I think it is necessary to know each other to keep you away from too strict invasion of the other or too bad reaction toward other human beings. Yeah, this is sort of line uh, of uh, my works. I, I have to do some, uh, a great number of, uh, of books now. I could maybe tell, yeah, I have some other small books, one little, where I try to, uh, with a book I call um, um, If the School Did Not Exist. This is a book um, on where I try to think away the pedagogical institution, uh, very much in line with Ivan Illich and his thinking on uh, educational systems, and say, and try then to point to that the school, to a large extent, is an institution which is very good for the parents, a way of getting rid of the kids for that period of their life, which I think is unhealthy and bad, has a lot of bad effects. I've written books on limits to pain, which is very much what I've tried to convey now, out of my values, I think that it is a great ideal for a country not to uh, say, increase the amount of intense, uh, of inflicted pain, of intentionally inflicted pain in society. Sort of, I like to talk about sort of the, the pain level, and I like to ask politicians in particular, do you want to increase the pain level of Norway? Or if you want to do that, and then we are strictly, straightly into the question of what sort of uh, society, what sort of alternative measures could be at hand uh, to prevent increasing the pain level to a too large extent.